with this record and with this, you know, with the song Civilian, it was about contending with not living the life of this, you know, so-called like good woman or like not relating to these normative ideas of what relationships should look like or what a life should look like. I think now I'm celebrating that. I think at the time it felt very dark and it felt very confusing and it felt like there weren't any, like my path was very murky and dark and that I didn't really understand or have any idea of like what it held because of that. It was this concept for me of like trying to perform goodness, whatever that I had internalized that meaning, and then also just not being able to pull it off entirely because it wasn't authentic for me. And I think at the time I had internalized the idea of goodness as staying in one relationship until you die. <laughs> and that's just not something I have been able to do in my life. And only now at 35 am I starting to begin to unpack the layers and layers of shame that I've internalized from that reality for me, um, that that was never going to be the thing. I mean, I don't necessarily feel like I, I understand all of the reasons why that is, but it's part of who I am. You know, I think I sort of am in many ways fundamentally alone. I, I think my autonomy is really important to me. And then I think like I also value and treasure intimacy, but it's like you come meet me where I am for as long as the connection exists. And then if it doesn't exist, then I move forward and we we separate. And so that's sort of the way that I've lived my life. But I think that there is so much shame for me around that being making me bad. Like I, I'm a bad person for like not being able to like stick it out and make it work like all my forebears did. And they were so happy. God, they were so happy, weren't they? They loved every minute of it. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that that was a lot of what was beginning to become clear to me. And it was just the tip of the iceberg as I later found out in the resulting decade of my life. When you make a choice about how to live your life, inevitably there are possibilities that you leave behind. And I think I made the right choice for the person that I am. And also I honor the fact that I, as a woman who, you know, was born in a time in history where I actually was able to make that choice. You know, I think my, my mother's generation and certainly my grandparents' generation and beyond, like you know, the, the option of doing what I'm doing with my life now and like not having a family and not having to sort of like run a household and be essentially an unpaid domestic servant was not an option for them. And it is an option for me. And that doesn't mean that there are times in my life where I'm like, wow, I really feel my, I feel my otherness or like I feel alienated or I feel scared of being alone or what have you, but the choice was there to make. And so it's sort of like, and I knew, I think I always knew intuitively that it was the choice that I needed to make for me. And that like the path for me was sort of like an artist's path. And, and like, that was what was, was going to make me actually feel like happy and fulfilled.
definitely seems like there was a particular relationship that was maybe ending or had ended when you were writing for this, but it sounds like a pretty heavy relationship. Maybe kind of yeah, unhealthy. Yeah. It was, you want to talk about that? It wasn't unhealthy. It was our relationship. It was mine and Andy's relationship, um, which I think is maybe not something we've ever really talked about nor do I really feel like particularly thrilled to talk about it now, but it's the truth. You know, it's like, I'm really, it was really heavy. I mean, we were in the van together, we were in a relationship and it was ending and we didn't want to lose everything at the same time. And so we chose to do the hard thing, which was let the relationship evolve into something else while trying to maintain our connection as friends and people who care about each other very deeply and people who want to make music together. So that was what we were going through. And we really never stopped. We never stopped being in a band. We never stopped touring, you know? Yeah. We, we, we went out on, on a tour like six weeks after we broke off our romantic relationship and we, yeah, we never really, we never really took a break from the the collaborative relationship. But I think we, something that we felt was that we were processing a lot of the end of that at the time, uh, you know, prior to even splitting up. So by the time we ended up ending our relationship, we, we had already, you know, made peace with ourselves. And then it was just making peace with the rest of the world and making everyone else understand that we were okay and that we were going to continue to be, be a band. And also be like in each other's lives. You know, Andy is like, it's funny because I say this, I know you won't be offended by this. Um, but like thinking about dating you is thinking about, it feels like thinking about dating my brother. Like, because like you are, I've known you since I was 15 years old, you know, you're like family to me. And I think that in many ways, like the time that we were together romantically was like much less than the time that we have been like dear close friends and collaborators. And so it's just one of those funny things where like it very much happened, but it's also like, it's just now it's sort of just like, yeah, but yeah, he's, he's, he's like my brother. He's like, you know, he's like my oldest friend. Um, and I'm proud of that. Like, I'm really proud of the fact that we were able to navigate and like, it, in many ways, I think it's easier to just sort of like put your hands up and be like, nope, like can't, it's too weird, it's too much, you know, but I'm really proud that we were able to sort of like navigate that transition, I think as gracefully as we did. It wasn't always easy, but like, we're still here, you know, we're still in some ways, although the, the, the collaboration has evolved, the relationship has evolved, but like, we're still doing this in some form, in some capacity, which is something that is a point of pride. Yeah, yeah, I gotta take a second to just that changes my like concept of the album. I guess <laughs> that it was the two of you. That's really really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes forget. I'm like, I feel like everybody knows that, but I guess that's not really something we really ever talked about, was it? No, we were very, we very consciously omitted that information at the time because it felt it felt too fresh and too personal. So we, we definitely kept that out of it. And, it. and that was also, you know, aside from being that a lot of the record was about our relationship, I think it was also at a time, Jen, where you were really opposed to having your words printed or analyzed really directly. And you, you wanted the you wanted the song to be the song and not to be written words, not to be a poem, not to be a conversation about it necessarily, but let it just stand for what it is. And so there was a little bit of like cloaked meaning that I think you especially like were very intentional about when we were rolling out the record. Well, and I still feel that way to a large degree philosophically speaking, that's absolutely how I feel about songs and songwriting where like, I don't believe that they are necessarily meant to have the words and the music be separate from one another because it's not about, yeah, it's not about reading words and determining a literal meaning. It's about like creating a sonic and emotional landscape and having an experience and the ambiguity 
that results in not really understanding exactly what I'm saying at every given moment is the very, the very thing that allows the listener to develop a relationship with the song and, and insert themselves into it and hear what they think they hear and make what meaning that they need to make out of it. I feel like I've always gone out of my way to leave that space in the songs that I, that I write because I, I believe that that is sort of part of what makes songs universal and what makes them for others and not just specifically a document of like my experience, which is why I sometimes forget the origin because it's really not, it's really about like creating the space for others to for, sort of like experience their own selves and their own thoughts and their own minds and, and their, and feel their feelings. And, and yeah, so I think that that, was something that I really was a stickler about, like not printing my lyrics, not having them printed anywhere and leaving that sense of ambiguity. I've kind of loosened up about it because I've loosened up about a lot of things because I'm older now and I just don't really give a shit. Um, <laughs> but, um, and also because people want to know and I'd rather them know what the real thing is than to sort of like, I don't know. It's fine. If people want to know, they should know. I don't need to be a pretentious dweeb about it. But that is that is true. That is how I feel. I wanted to love you like my mother. sure that's just Andy playing. I don't think I play the guitar solo on that record at all. I mean, I certainly played a shit ton of guitar solos after the fact for years and years and years until I never wanted to hear the words guitar solo ever again. Uh, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, that's you, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I do think that that guitar solo is me on civilian, but I think that in the studio, there was some back and forth of like trying to figure out what the energy of the thing should be. And it started out with, you know, Jen playing some stuff and then I took the guitar and then it went back to her. And then, but, you know, as we sort of pared it down, as, as often happens in the studio, you know, it, it ended up being like that, that, that was all me, but that happens pretty often in you know not just on that record but like whenever we're recording where it's like one of us has an idea and the other one is micromanaging the shit out of it <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah and has whatever you know whatever kind of skill set whether it's on you know keys or on drums or whatever to to execute what the other person is hearing uh just like a little more cleanly or with a little more of whatever we're looking for <laughs> 